there's absolutely no reason, if you're fortunate, why after a transplant you can't live a life that's as good, if not better, than the one you had before. Within the historic Royal Free Hospital in London lies a dedicated team of professionals committed to improving the lives of people with liver disease. The team is now at the forefront of diagnosis and treatment around the world. Keen sportsman Colin Mitchell was only 39 when a unique condition called Bud Chiari syndrome caused his liver to suddenly and rapidly fail. I started 1989 as, as a reasonably healthy, fit guy, playing a lot of cricket holding down a pretty demanding job. About the middle of July, I started being very unwell and was referred to a consultant. And um, the consultant told me immediately that I just had end-stage liver failure. Fortunately, the, the consultant at the Royal Fee said, there's nothing to worry about, we'll just get you a transplant. And I think that was the beginning for me of simply saying, OK, then, that's fine, and relaxing with all these experts. As soon as a patient is on the transplant list, they will then see a transplant coordinator. This is just the beginning of the care they and their families will receive from a dedicated team of as many as 20 professionals. Our role is um, mainly to support the patients and their families through the whole process of transplantation. Uh, we see the patients initially when they're referred to us for assessment for transplantation and organise their tests. Um, and talk to them about what the tests involved and what will happen once we get the results back. We then organise the actual transplant operation itself when we have a liver offer and also, again, give a lot of information and support to the families and the patients at that time. The transplant procedure itself usually takes about five hours, sometimes a little less if it's a, a relatively straightforward procedure and sometimes considerably longer if it's more complicated. As, as transplant coordinators, we would always go into theatre with the patient because it's quite a frightening and anxious time for the patient and for the families. And then for the rest of the transplant, we would um, keep in touch with the families to let them know how things are going and when they're expected out of theatre. One of the things that I noticed, first of all, was that they shared the care with you. Everybody told you what was going on. I wasn't desperately interested in understanding the science of it, but I sure as hell wanted to know about the chances and the odds and the probability and what was going to happen next. And I found that all the staff, the nursing staff um, and the doctors and consultants, were happy to sit down and talk to you, and my family found the same. After a liver transplant operation, one of the very pleasing things and satisfying things, most for the patient, obviously, is that they can feel better very, very soon afterwards. If you've had a transplant, you are a patient for life, but we hope you will be a well patient for life. And indeed, most patients do extremely well and need uh, very routine care. I've had 18 years of, of a tremendous life, in many respects better than the life I had before, um, and I'm expecting more. I've looked after myself, so I've been fairly healthy. I went out and started competitive running and race walking, which I'd never done before. I got selected for the World Games and I won medals there and ended up freakishly being the world champion of, of race walking for my age group. I'm captain of the Great Britain Transplant Cricket Club, which is a cricket club we put together um, four years ago to take on the Australian transplantees. And the whole sporting business of, of transplant sports has just been terrific. I would feel very confident if I were facing another liver transplant now. I wouldn't see it as a possible end, but a, a new beginning. <laughs>